told you guys time and time again, one thing we're going to do is keep it real. So we literally are doing a control group of rabbits that are getting the homemade pellets and ones that are not. And that's for several reasons. One, we need to know if they can digest it. Um, you don't want to give it brand new to all your rabbits at one time and anything because their digestive tracts are so sensitive. So this is us being realistic. We're going to try it. We hope that it works because, like I said, I know that the grains and the seeds are coming, you know, from a regional area. They're not being shipped in out of country. I know it's going into the pellets. It's not a bunch of anti-cakers and preservatives, and it's not high, high heat like they do when they pelletize your feed. It's also fresh because it's just freshly ground. The other good thing is everything we ground up just now that we didn't use, we can take, throw it out to the rabbits, I mean to the chickens for them to eat. So it's a win-win situation and the fact that we don't want to have to buy feed anymore. What about supply chains? You really got to think through all of this. If we can't figure it out now in a time of peace in America, where we can go to a feed store and ask questions and look things up on the internet, what in the world are we gonna do if we go to war or the supply chains fall apart again, or God forbid COVID or any other this nonsense happens and we just can't get the supplies that we need. So like my husband said, right now we're not growing, well, we are growing them, but they won't be ready for several months. So between now and then, we're gonna be working with stuff that we're getting from our local co-op feed and seed store. Welcome back to Sorky Farmstead, you guys. So this video is gonna cover some really important topics. One, what raw materials will you need to be able to mill a pellet for your rabbits? And can you feed your rabbits with cake style pellets instead of individualized pellets? Welcome back to Storky Farmstead. So today, Stephen and I came to our nearest feed and seed store here in Southeast Louisiana to pick up the different grains we're gonna need to mill our own rabbit feed. Now, long-term, I'll be looking to grow my own cover crops and mill from that. But since it is fall, moving into winter, I have to be considerate and really think through how I'm going to be able to provide enough food for my rabbits and my chickens and the goats that'll be on the farm this winter. Without buying it, I won't be able to produce it fast enough. So today we came, what we realized was they had no oats, um, they had no wheat, they had no bran. So we went with Milo, went with black oil sunflower seeds, we went with cracked corn and I want to say they had barley and we picked that up. He's got the this, this slip and I'll double check for you because our goal is to take all of that home, mill it, and we're going to make the pelletizers working, but you've got to really know how moist to get it to get the correct size pellets and then you have to dry them. So to avoid all of that extra steps and needing all that extra equipment, what we're going to do mill out all this because we also got alfalfa hay we're gonna mill it all together and patty it into a cake from there I'm going to dry it and I have an industrial size refrigerating system so we're gonna turn it off we're gonna put de dehumidifiers in that metal refrigerating system and we're gonna use those trays there to keep all the rabbit cakes that we're gonna make so I'm gonna show you some of the recipes that you can use to make your own rabbit feed that came out of a book from the 70s when homesteaders used to make their own feeds. From there, you can kind of tweak it and twerk it and move it and work it however you have to to be able to come up with a feed where you can either buy the raw materials at your local feed and seed store or you can learn to grow them as cover crops and harvest them and then turn that into feed, which is my long-term plan. So you need to start thinking that through. Guys, feed costs are just gonna keep going up. We're getting subpar materials. When you get a pre-packaged feed, they're buying those materials as cheap as possible and then feeding 
like pelletizing that up for your feed. You don't know where that's coming from. So at least when I buy it from the V store, I am getting those materials local. Uh, Steven, Dr. Formstead. Now we're playing with the mill machine here. Now we did go to the co-op and we bought some different stuff here, but we are going to be growing our own to try it. And now, right now we're just trying, we're experimenting. So I just, instead of wasting the time of growing the stuff, we went and bought some to see how it works. Right now I'm putting that's the black oil sunflower black seed. Black oil sunflower seeds, one scoop. Now this here's already been milled, but I'm doing it anyways just to go ahead and mix it together still. This is Milo. 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 And then, Crack. corn. Crack corn. And that's the little concoction we're doing. And the one that was already milled is soybean because they didn't have wheat, barley, or oats. None of it. And before I do oats, any of it, I wouldn't think they would even have right now. I mix it up real good. Now we're gonna try it. So this is how nice and powdery, so that's gonna be really easy to make into a cake, you guys. Now we're gonna mill this bucket. And I have found out you cannot pour it too quick. Tightening it up or loosening it up? Tightening it up a little bit. Now y'all want to do that again? Y'all want to do this by hand or by machine? Definitely by machine. All right, let me quicker. see. Why don't you mix all that together and we'll start trying to put them into cake form and make our first rabbit feed cakes. Yeah. And then we'll pop them in the oven. You can mix it now or it's already kind of mixed. I mixed it all up. But I did go buy a different thing. I want to know. I bought a big one. It's a concrete mixer for a drill, and it works a whole lot better. Oh yeah, I like the way that's mixing that up. That mixes that up nicely. What you wanna do, because you're gonna try to make sure all your cakes have the different uh, ingredients in them. And guys, you gotta make sure there you go. that they're mixed well. Mix some really warm water some sugarcane syrup, and a little bit of salmon oil, guys. I'm gonna mix this together really well, and this is what we're gonna use to get the cakes to bind together. Now, if you do not use warm to hot water, you're not gonna get your molasses or your sugarcane syrup, whatever you're using as a binding agent to dissolve. Get this preheated now before you get outside and make your cakes. Very important step, go ahead, preheat your oven to 275 degrees. You don't want to go any hotter than that because you do not want to break down the oils and the nutrition and the amino acids in the cakes that you're making for your rabbits. You see them balls you can make? That be. There it is, it keeps moving. You gotta break it. I'm wondering if I should put a couple raw eggs Wait. in it. You can. As a binding agent. You can. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. Executive decision made.
we're gonna have to use some fresh yard eggs, raw eggs, to get this to bind together the way we want it to so we can Three bake it. yard eggs, a whole lot more of cane syrup, and some more warm water. And back out there we go, you guys. We're just trying to see if we can bind it together so we can bake these cakes and see if this is actually gonna work. Egg, sugar cane syrup. I even put the eggshells because what's it gonna hurt? <laughs> A little bit more water, and let's see if we can get these to bind together a little bit better. Good thing beauty didn't conquer the world. We're gonna go bake these, you guys, for like 20 minutes and just get them to dry out, harden up a little bit. And then we're gonna see how the rabbits like so them. In the book that I got this information from, it said that you could warm them up and dry them out and make them like a cake, or you could give it to them moistened up in a cake shape. So, we're gonna do it both ways. We've got a couple of homemade large pellets, and we're gonna come out here, we're gonna put them in with the rabbits, we're gonna see how they do on them. I mean, it's the best we can do. We have to practice, we have to know how to do this. We don't know what's coming in the world. Fee costs keep going up, people keep having trouble with their animals reproducing, and I'm thinking it's coming from the feed. So, you know, you have to try. Give him one. Well, I can tell you guys this. It's a winner in the sense that she's tearing this up. Wish I could get a better angle of her eating it, but she's really liking it. And they should, because it's everything that they would eat in the wild, ground up and a little bit more natural. It's bunny approved. I don't want to give all my bucks and all my does all of these because if something happens, I still have something to fall back on. <laughs> <laughs> so I really hope that this helps you, that you guys think about making your own rabbit feeds. And God bless you. Please like, comment, and subscribe to get real homesteading well, videos. This is a pretty big bowl, right? So this is going to feed the chickens real quick. So like I said, you can feed them the same thing you're feeding your rabbits. Not really going to make much difference because our chickens eat a lot of leftover food. They get a lot of supplements like whole pumpkins. We put a lot of green materials in here for them. Plus, we compost in the coop. So, they're always getting red wigglers and beetles and worms. That's really important because chickens are not herbivores. You guys How ready? Chickens feel about the homemade rabbit chicken feed. They love it. All right, you guys, so what you see them eating is black hole sunflower seeds, soybean meal, then they've got millet, and they've got cracked corn. We milled all that up, and that's what they're eating. And I'm gonna tell you what, they're really enjoying it. Do your chickens and rabbits have to have a traditional pellet? No. I can say this, they actually do kind of smell good. And Steven said, are you gonna put um, any seasoning? They are pretty dry and they seem to be somewhat firm. You gotta be careful around your edges. This is all learning. It's all learning. Like, comment, and subscribe. Over time, you're gonna see us get this to a perfect design no. and pellet and what works for us here on our farmstead but what you're seeing now is realistic as we're learning how to do this nothing starts perfect you guys and we literally can't find any information anywhere where people are actually trying to do this so this is us figuring it out for ourselves the government doesn't want you to know <laughs> no because let me so tell you nothing something. more afraid that makes the government afraid than people who pull themselves out of the system. We are slowly becoming producers for everything we need on our farmstead. And what that makes the government realize is that I don't need a middleman and I don't need the government's help. Tomorrow, if there was no food in the grocery store and no food at the feed store, 
I still would be able to feed me and mine, including my livestock, my pets, my family, and myself. And I hope and I pray that you get in the wagon, get in the boat with us, you guys. Row with us, learn with us, share with us. Because as a community of homesteaders, farmers, and farmsteaders, we can figure this out. We can do this, but you're gonna start right where Stephen and I are. You start with little to no knowledge, with a book that was written in the 1970s, and you just start trying. Give us three or four months, and we're gonna be pros at this.